Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks is currently in the process of updating its wolf management plan. The proposed plan includes controversial methods to control the wolf population with the goal of reducing conflicts with livestock. Montana PBS's A.J. Williams spoke with ranchers who aren't waiting on a new plan to take a different approach in protecting their livelihood. Kenny Holland calls his dogs in from a day of work guarding his livestock. We have a family ranch, been here three generations. We are a cow-calf operation. Their ranch is located outside of Dillon in a region known as the High Divide between Idaho and Montana, which is a major corridor for carnivores. Last year, the Hollands lost 60 calves from their herd of 500, many of which they believe were due to wolves. Their livelihood was being threatened and the Hollands knew they needed to send a message to the predators. Hunting wolves is legal in Montana, but Holland jokes that he's not a great shot, and mostly, he wanted a longer-lasting solution, which is why he looked to other methods. I'm not going to sit here and say I want every wolf dead. It's not the way it's going to be, so you might as well not think like that. This is a very polarized issue, and people are very passionate on all on all ends. Yeah. Wolf management in Montana often brings extreme views. Samantha Fino is the new wolf management plan's main author and says a variety of social and political perspectives are speaking up on the complicated topic. There are people who, um, you know, want to save every wolf, who do not want to hunt or trap or have a harvest season for wolves. But there is also that constituency group that does want to participate in that recreational opportunity um, that understands balance of a, of a um, wolf population that allows for prey species and prey herds to thrive on the landscape as well. Fino explains that according to the data collected by FWP, the state's wolf population has recovered significantly since the last management plan was approved over 20 years ago. FWP's new management plan is intent on managing this new reality with additional harvest methods that many find controversial. FWP assesses that there are roughly 1,000 to 1,100 wolves in Montana, which is over the minimum goal of 450 or 15 breeding pairs. The population also exceeds the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's minimum of 150. More wolves across the state without adjusted management methods could mean more conflict and more livestock loss for ranchers in wolf-populated areas like the Hollands. There are livestock producers who um, have to deal with on a daily basis their livelihoods um, you know, being threatened in regards to how they make their money. Wolf management has been a decades-long controversy in Montana. Wolves spent many years on the endangered species list, but they've made a successful comeback and were delisted in 2011. Currently, Montana manages its own population in conversation with neighboring states and will aim to keep the population count high enough to avoid federal intervention. The choice is before ranchers facing wolf issues to go down either the lethal or non-lethal route. If they're going to take a non-lethal approach, that leaves more living wolves to be managed by the state. Lethal removal has its place in particular situations. It can resolve a conflict short term, but it can't be the only solution to prevent conflicts going in the long run. And so conflict prevention really needs to go hand in hand with wolf management if we're going to coexist with these animals for the long term. The Hollands got their four Great Pyrenees a year and a half ago. They serve as livestock guardian dogs, which is a method of protecting the herd that has been used by many cultures across thousands of years. They first heard about the opportunity through meeting Johnston, who works for the organization People and Carnivores. They're committed to proactively addressing human and livestock predator conflicts in Montana. The tools they offer serve as deterrence to the predators and often have longer lasting effects than lethal force. They range from affordable to thousands of dollars, depending on the type of intervention needed. We do provide financial cost share assistance, whether it's implementing tools like livestock guardian dogs or electric fencing, stuff like that. The amount of money that they're spending to prevent it is just money that they would have potentially lost if they had, you know, conflicts or started to lose livestock. You can tell every once in a while they will get a whiff of something and they'll key in into a particular direction and be prepared they might just leave. <laughs> If it wouldn't have been for Kim 
and the peoples and carnivores stepping up and saying, well, we'll, you know, we'll pay for X amount, a, a dog and, and, and help you get reimbursed through a program for the dog food. Now it made our dogs look more, okay, we can take this chance, you know, instead of just throwing all the dang money out there and then being like, told you it wouldn't work. My idea is I have these dogs to protect my livestock. They're not made to fight. I mean, they will fight between them running around and tinkling here and tinkling there and doing their thing here and there. That is supposed to keep the wolves away. According to Montana FWP, there's been a decrease in livestock loss from the start of wolf hunting season in Montana. In 2022, Wildlife Services confirmed that wolves killed 103 livestock, but Johnston says they tend to be underreported due to limitations with the process. She says that as wolves continue to populate the landscape, there's still a gap of information in reaching landowners in conflict-ripe areas. For example, Johnston explains that different types of management are needed to respond to wolf behavior depending on the season. In calving season, the Hollands could also put up electric fencing or turbo flattery, which makes it less likely that wolves would approach the herd. So this is what we call turbo flattery. So basically it's just this interspersed flagging suspended from an electric wire. So like I mentioned earlier, it takes advantage of wolves neophobic behavior or essentially just that fear of novel stimulus in their environment. So this is a tool, something that they're not used to seeing in the natural environment. So it can help deter them short term from areas that might bring them into conflict. No tool is going to be 100% effective, but it's all about, again, how you use those tools and you can combine them or use them in different ways to improve their overall effectiveness. People and Carnivores is one of the groups that partner with FWP to help with conflict mitigation. But Fino says managing the species at the state level means managing the interests of all Montanans, and specifically recreationalists like hunters and trappers. FWP, it is you know, up to us. It is our responsibility to provide those opportunities for those interested if the populations, um, you know, are robust enough to sustain that. Montanans hunting the species has been a long-standing issue, and the legislature has changed those possibilities with increasing the avenues of harvest. When FWP provides their proposals and their recommendations for the Wildlife Commission, we do consider what is fair, what is ethical, and what is humane, and they may pass those that may cross that line in some people's perspectives and opinion. Fino says that the legislative changes in acceptable avenues to harvest wolves using bait, snares, and hunting at night on private land were in part to increase success rates for hunters and trappers. It's a pretty low um, recreational participation. There's not many that, that hunt and trap wolves. Um, and it is a very difficult endeavor. You know, wolves are elusive. They're very smart. There's only a few individuals each harvest season that harvest more than, than one wolf. The Montana FWP Commission was effective as wolves killed by trapping surpassed deaths by hunting for the first time in 2022, which is in line with the changes made. Together, there were a total of 258 wolves harvested, roughly a quarter of the estimated population of approximately 1,000 to 1,100. The updated legal harvest numbers and methods were based on data compiled by FWP's biologists and interpreted by specialists. This number may change if monitoring methods change in the future. But public mistrust around wolf management runs deep. In a recent listening session FWP held for feedback on the plan in Missoula, groups from varying perspectives didn't trust the data provided. Are you saying from this new plan that you're going to be more transparent than in the past? And brought forth alternative studies and their own observations. There was a severe overestimation bias of 150% that proliferated through IPOM's submodel structure and resulted in estimated wolf abundance two and a half times larger than true abundance. Region 1 has about 3,000, 4,000 elk. They could handle, they could actually probably support 20,000 elk. And I go places where I used to elk hunt and see elk when I was in college. I see nothing but wolf tracks. 
So here we have um, several outputs from IPOM from 2022. We monitor- Montana FWP uses an integrated patch occupancy model known as IPOM to estimate the state's wolf population. They used years of data to set harvest quota and recommendations in the new management plan. There's a lot of misunderstanding of IPOM. Stakeholders on all sides have criticized the model for reporting population numbers they believe to be too high, which would mean increased harvest quota, or too low, which means that the harvest numbers aren't high enough. We acknowledge that there's uncertainty that, that's built into the entire model, and we, we acknowledge that. Um, but this is a way that we can have the best information available to us to make um, informed management decisions and to bring that forward as we're making our recommendations. The comment period is closed and a new management plan is imminent. All stakeholders will be affected by the changes as they each approach management with a different perspective on what wolf interactions bring to their lives. Back in the high divide, Holland takes care of the dogs as they put in a hard day's work looking after his herd. He's kind of a hog. It's only been a year and a half into having livestock guardian dogs, but the Hollands have already seen a big difference in loss. They plan on growing to a pack of six to eight dogs eventually, because so long as there are wolves to manage, they'll keep coming through their valley. I want to make myself clear, they're not a cure-all. I'm not gonna save every calf, I, I get that. I mean, but if I only lose three to wolves or a bear, four, compared to 20, then, then that's a win. The wolves will be back. And so I think it's going to be a constant educational process for the ranchers to help the public and, and each other understand what we're all trying to gain in this process. For Impact, I'm A.J. Williams. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks is currently finalizing the Wolf Conservation and Management Plan which they anticipate releasing in March.